Hi everyone, I'm making a, a video to demonstrate how poorly the uh, inline coolant heater works for Yamaha snowmobiles. This is a 2010 VK Professional, but they're using this system on a number of uh, sleds and I have had no luck with it. It heats properly, it does what, the heater does what it's supposed to do, but it does not heat the block of the engine. So I'm going to show you, it's been plugged in here for about uh, 25 minutes, half an hour. And uh, in case you're not familiar with this, the, uh, <clears throat> the heater is an inline heater. They, they specify to put it in the coolant line. And this is it down here, my finger, I'm, that block is the heater. I won't touch it because it's hot. Heats this cooling line. Uh, it's, it's got engine coolant in it. <clears throat> the problem being, uh, the heat rises, it's like convection in air. So the hot antifreeze will rise up the line. Theory is developing almost like a heat pump, uh, drawing cooler coolant in the bottom and circulating it through your engine. A couple of big problems. So that line comes up <clears throat> from underneath the engine. And this is the line right here. My finger is pointing to it. And if you follow that line, it goes all across the top and it goes into the radiator. So then it comes back out the other side of the rad <clears throat> in the back, right down here. Line comes out of there, goes to the thermostat. And from the thermostat, it can feed through into the engine through the head or uh, draw again from down below. Um, I'm not sure if that's the bottom of the engine, but it's most likely the um, also one of the, there's cooling you have your uh, cooling rad on the track, so I'm not quite sure where that one's positioned on this. I haven't checked. It's irrelevant for what I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> so the temperature, this is in a garage, it's winter, but I'm in the garage. So the temperature uh, of essentially everything here uh, in the garage and the machine, you can see 62, it'll be like 62 to 64 degrees. So if I measure the engine down here, I don't know if you can see that now, 62 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been plugged in half an hour. It's still the same ambient temperature, the engine block down there as the garage. <clears throat> and here's why, and here's where the problem starts. So obviously if I measure the coolant hose up here, you will see that the, uh, there we go, 129, 138 degrees Fahrenheit. So we get over here. 112 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the coolant going into the rad. So again, where it spreads on the wing of the rad going into all the cooling fins, we've got 107 degrees. Now, you can picture in the winter, to heat your engine, the coolant that they're heating has to flow through the radiator. And if it's minus 30 degrees, uh, we have a problem. So there you go. It was as much as 100 degrees on the other side. It's only 71 by the time it comes through the radiator and that's in uh, almost summer like temperatures <clears throat> so then it has to get over here to the thermostat and at the thermostat it's showing 86 degrees which is pretty good however sorry so 80 86 but that thermostat will be closed because it will only open when it's hot so again coming from the rad that rad circulating system i would assume that's closed at the end of the day, we have water and coolant in the system. It's 130 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's not reaching the engine and it's getting cooled by the rad before it gets pushed back down to the engine. So again, I take a temperature of the engine down here, 62 degrees. Uh, we'll try it up a little higher. We're right beside the hot tubes here, 65 degrees. So in my opinion, this is a absolutely useless heating system uh, and it's installed the way it's installed the way the factory says it comes as a kit i am going to install a different heater and i'll do a video when i do it uh, these machines have what's called an oil cooler if you actually have your air box off and you you look behind the battery tilt the battery out there's a round aluminum housing and it's bolted right into the engine two cooling lines going into it, and that housing is full of oil and coolant passes through it 
to take heat out of the engine oil. And I've purchased a uh, um, silicone stick-on type heater that I'm going to mount to that uh, oil cooler. It's 120 watts. It's not huge, but it's enough that it should be heating the oil in the bottom of the engine. So I'll uh, make another video when I get that one. But at the end of the day, if you're having problems starting your Yamaha with a Genesis engine and the factory kit uh, they're selling you, uh, I've tried this when it's minus 30 and I had it plugged in for two, three hours. And again, I could feel warmth in the radiator and right off the bat I was, you know, saying to myself, well, this isn't working. And the block was stone cold and it really didn't make a difference for me. Maybe some other have luck, but the problem is we're cooling the coolant before we put it to the engine. Anyway, hope that helps someone make a decision.